Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner. In this video we're going to be doing a card fight banger video. A while back I was asked if I would do a review of the Narakami cards that we got out of this set because a lot of things have happened since I did any discussion type things. Uh, yeah, I haven't really like, done like a discussion on Naru since VMAX was spoiled. When I mistakenly thought that they were going to be printing appropriate support to make getting VMAX off by second or third stride consistently a thing. Well, as we've all found out, Divine Dragon Caper more or less sucks a load of bollocks. Unless you're playing Shadow Paladins and Aqua Force, which by sheer fluke is not awful, then you're pretty much boned because this set is pretty much designed to reboot Shadow Paladins, and then the rest of clans are fillers. Aqua Force has a couple good cards, Wailing Thavaz is great, but even then, like, a good portion of the cards in this set aren't noteworthy. I mean, they're good, but they aren't on the same level as the Shadow Paladin cards. Angel Feathers get two cards. Spike Brothers are actually pretty good at what they're at, but at the same time, this set doesn't do anything to change the fact that they're a glass cannon. And the Narus, despite being one of the quote-unquote marquee clans of the set, got extremely shafted. As this set, it gave us things, but it didn't give us the things that we needed. It didn't give us the tools needed to improve our consistency, play when our opponent chooses not to play into our plays, i.e. they don't call a board, we still can't do anything about that. It doesn't do anything to help our lack of defensive prowess as multi-tech decks like Gear Chronicle, Grand Blue, they can run roughshaw over us because they keep calling units. So even if we kill their things that would be restanding and say the Aqua Force matchup with Bulwark Dragon, it doesn't matter for those things because they'll just replace them with a new unit and swing for 11 or 16 and we're losing card advantage just trying to deal with all that stuff. We still can't do with that. And the Thunderstrike mechanic itself is, well, shit. When it was first revealed, it seemed like a neat concept, but much like with the keywords that are not good, such as Brave or Oracle, it, it it's very half-assed. It's based on a fringe aspect of the stride bearer of the clan, and it has no actual synergy with the clan itself. Compare Thunderstrike to Blaze, and you'll see just what I mean. Thunderstrike is really only good with one deck. Vanquisher, Blaze on your hand in its supporting cast of cards can be played in just about any Kagero deck because every Kagero deck's goal is to have more rear guards than your opponent. Likewise, Hollow and Bloom, they work with Grand Blue and Neo Nectar because Grand Blue and Neo Nectar naturally do these things. Thunderstrike, on the other hand, cannot be used with Brawler, Eradicator, Kaiser, hell, even Noble Kami can't even use this shit. And, unfortunately, this set does not give us enough Thunderstrike support in what it needs to do, and that is, enable the deck. We have these neat cards in here that have neat effects if you are a Thunderstrike, but we still have no way to fucking get the Thunderstrike outside of Vanquisher Stride Break and cards from set 2 and set 5. The fact that the majority of Narakami lists post this set are going to be running mostly cards from set 5, and even cards from before that, I'm even talking about running the original, uh, what's his name, Garuda from set 6, because we still don't have a counter charge engine. We still have to run our stand trigger from set 2 in order to have the counter blasts necessary to actually play out the game, because this deck goes through 2 to 3 counter blasts in a turn. Oh my lord, I am getting triggered. Like, this is just... This is why I haven't done a video on the subject, because I keep getting triggered every time I talk about this, because it's so frustrating to see what they did with Ritual, and what they do with Paladins in general, and then, like, it's if you're not playing Paladins or Gears, it's like, fuck you! Well, oh, by the way, the other thing that triggers me about this set is that Busher Road, they claim it was an accident, but I'm pretty certain this was deliberate. They changed how the reprints work. Instead of us getting a triple R foil reprint per box of a specific card, they went and decided to change that to rare foiling, despite the fact the packs will actually say it's triple R, because, oops, we had an error in production. No, you guys did it so that you wouldn't have to, to cut costs. 
because people you probably thought people wouldn't give a damn. Um, no, a lot of us actually did want to get foils of these cards. I I picked up a blue wave deck because Wailing Thavas, I mean, uh, Commander Thavas is getting reprinted in the set, and I'm still going to pick him up because I need the card, and he's going to be cheap as the reprint, but I really wanted to get a playset of those new descendants and triple R for them because it would have looked nice. But now that they just look like shitty rares, I'm probably not even going to swap my descendants I already have out with them. Good job. All right. So those are my grievances on the set. For a Shadow Paladin player, the set's great. You have a lot of really great value cards in here. Morfessa's expensive. Luard's going to be expensive for a while. But if you're not a Shadow Paladin player and you're not an Aqua Force player, this set is a colossal, well, disappointment. You have no reason to buy boxes because everything you want is pretty much pennies. I can get the entire Narakami cards I need from here for less than $70, and this is pre-release. I'm sure it's going to cost less than $50 USD to update my deck. Hell, it might even cost me about $200 to SP it off if I really wanted to. Still on the fence about that. I do want them Secret Gen Rare VMAXs, though, at the very least. Because, at the very least, Bulwark's SP full art looks nice, so that's something to go on. But, this set is just, it's so disappointing if you're not a Paladin player. And, I don't know if that's going to change anytime soon. Hopefully, set 10 will be better for the non-Paladin players. As, Novas generally get good support in every set they're featured in. I'm excited for the the Blau support. I still have my Galaxy Blau Cougar deck, Missing Mons. But I have everything else for that deck, so I'll give it a shot. And next set also has Neonectors in them, and Neonector is kind of a good clan. But, ah, <sighs> uh, I just, again, every time I even think about doing a discussion on this set, I get into these rants. Normally I cut these out and would just go on, but you know what, I'm going to keep this in here, because I want my fellow Narakami players to... Uh, not feel alone if they're upset about this set, which you guys should be. I, like, this this clear bias towards the clans that are more popular than the clans that are not is really problematic when it comes to set design because a lot of clans suffer from Busher Road's R&D team being devoted towards making these specific clans, mostly Paladins, good, and then everything else is like whatever. Like, I'm convinced that Grand Blue became good by sheer fluke. It wasn't intended for Grand Blue decks to be good, it just happened. So, with that long winter rant out of the way, justified, I feel, let's get on to the actual contents of this set for Narakami players. I'm only going to be talking about Narakami in the set. If you want a full on set review, slash breakdown of this just wait for a different fight to put up his own video because he does these kind of things i'm just only talking about the one clan in here because it's the one clan i care about more than anything else so let's begin all right now that i'm considerably less salt let's get started on this so the first card we'll talk about is of course one of the co well quote-unquote cover cards of the set and that is dragonic vanguard v max went into him before already i was pretty hyped when i saw him and then the rest of the support came out, and this guy is no longer the potential format warper that we all thought it was going to be. I have no idea how the secondary markets changed as a result, either. I wonder if Dismals are still pricey. Future video, for certain. I'll wait until the actual set drops before that happens, though. So. But anyway, um, VMAX, he's good. He's not busted. In fact, I'd say he's potentially balanced. Like, they actually put thought into this card compared to some of the other things in the, they've done in the past. Although, in time, this card may become better, we don't have adequate support to make this guy as viable as a second or third stride, as you'd say, for... What's a good example? Primavera. Actually, Primavera is a potentially good first stride, but, like... There's like not enough Thunderstrike support to get to this guy as you're like a, a reliable, you know, second or third stride, like compared to Darkness and such forth. But it's his Thunderstrike five skill is still something to keep in the back of your mind against decks that actually put cards on board and don't like not call things. You can get the Thunderstrike five after your second stride in an average game. So 
It's not completely out of the realm of possibility. The counter blast, though, is an issue as we did not get a means of unflipping damage outside of, well, anything in this set. We still have to run our set two cards in order to do that. And then another skill makes them splashable in just about any Naro deck. Like, if you're playing anything Narukami, you really have no reason to not run one VMAX and two Vanquishers. Just to have that ability to attack the front row if you're playing Eradicators, or attack the Vanguard and two back row rearguards if you're playing Kaiser. It'll still proc the effects of your Crown Holder Dragons. It'll still proc the effects of your Brawler rearguards if you're playing Brawler. This thing's actually hilarious with that deck, because you can have Big Bang Knuckle Turbo flip voltage, flip voltage, flip voltage, flip voltage, and then you just stride into this guy, and then you get to attack more things. It's like, you will get to punch out everything forever with that deck. And for that reason, this card's not complete, uh, it's not unplayable. And again, it's just something that'll be there. Like, if you're going up against a Vanquisher deck and you don't, and you, your opponent's able to set you up to be in a position where they can VMAX you, he'll get you. I haven't won too many games off of this effect, but that's because I've either won my games because I've killed them with my other strides, or I've just never needed to go into this guy because. The other thing about the Narukami extra deck in particular is that we already have a bunch of finisher cards already. Wow, redundant speech is redundant. But we have Conquest Dragon, who, granted, has become a bit weaker now because G Guardians are able to block your columns that would otherwise have been difficult to guard with. So he's become weaker, but he's still there, and he's still useful for matchups that don't call units to the front row, so you can just suddenly go, hey, 10k to the front. So you have Conquest. You have Finish Blow Dragon. That's still a pretty decent tech. You have Voltage himself, which was, which actually does kind of suck if you have to use him as your first ride now because you're giving up a Voltage, which was generally just really big columns, like not Neo Nectar sized, but 40k columns, and you're losing out on the ability to do that one more time in favor of going to this guy. But you have those. And then you have your respective other finishers for the other decks. Kaiser has Warning. Brawlers have Turbo. Eradicators have, in addition to Finish Bill, it happens to have Zillion. So it's not like we're lacking in that department. And VMAX is a very nice addition to that. Unfortunately, we didn't get what we truly needed out of this set, and that was a setup first stride play. Something that would Persona Flip or G Flip anything and get a Retire Bind. We needed that more than anything else, and we didn't get that, which is unfortunate, but this card's good. The Senate Zillion. So, I kind of made this controversial video that I said that a Descendant Stride was not going to be enough to make Eradicators relevant again, and, well, I'm right. This deck is doing nothing, at least in the Japan. Granted, Japan's format is pretty bad. Ours is pretty bad, too. Like, their competitive environment is basically Seven Seas, Rush, Chaos, Sanctuary Guard, and Gear Chronicle. Those are like the, tr and, uh, whoops, Genesis as well. Those are like your main decks, and this can't really compete with those. I mean, I guess maybe Seven Seas Rush, but because they're attacking so frequently, you're giving up cards, and Eradicators were never really good at building their own advantage, which is just an issue with Narukami in general, and that they, that they didn't fix, is that we don't have a way to build up hand, which is like, we kind of, control clans kind of need that way and that means of keeping uh, consistent uh, keeping a hand so that they can deal with these aggressive decks because Vanguard heavily favors these aggro clans and a Kagero deck and a Narukami deck will just get blown out of the water by something like Gear Chronicle doing going off a of time leaping. But I digress. Uh, Zillion himself is actually a good card. He's not busted. He's just I would have liked to have him get the crit when he restands, but that's not that's not really the, the issue with the card. The issue is you want your opponent to block this thing so that you can get the restand and more checks. But if they're at three damage, then first striding this is kind of pointless, so he might as well be a GB2. On the other hand, though, if your opponent's at four damage or five damage going into your first stride turn, he's viable. Like he's a he's a flexible card. I have no problem with Zillion, and he allows you to run descendants. And this guy in, in a descent in a Vanquisher deck and have that access to Zillion when you've pushed your opponent through Voltage and VMAX. If they are somehow still alive after that, you just ride Descendant and go into this guy, and now you have a Restander. 
if that's going to be better than playing pure Vanquisher. I don't know. I will test it. At the very least, though, this guy is dirt cheap. I think he's going to... He'll probably be $3 by the time like the hype around the set dies down. But otherwise, um, I don't know what else to say. Like this, The reason why I said that Ascendant Stride was not going to be enough to save Eradicators when this set dropped was... I had a strong suspicion that the rear guard support that we were going to be getting in here wouldn't be that great because Vanguard only clans cannot get by anymore. Your rear guards need to be able to do something because we are becoming a more rear guard oriented game. And Eradicators is one of those clans where your rear guards generally just do one thing kill. And that doesn't really do a whole lot anymore. Like you're minusing your opponent. Is pointless because they plus by calling more units on the board and not having the call from hand, or they caught cards to their hand by drawing because all the aggro clans have the ability to kill your rear guards, i.e. Grand Blue, or draw cards, i.e. Gear Chronicle, or do both Grand Blue. So, whereas our rear guards kind of don't do that, they they kind of tried here, and I get where they were going, but it just they kind of fell short, like. Oh, we'll get to that card in a bit. Uh, then, before I go on more on the Eradicator stuff, well, we have our other foils. So we have Bulwark Dragon here. In the Thunderstrike deck, this card's great. I mean, he's basically a better Vitras because Thunderstrike 3 is really easy to get off. So, hey, you have uh, somewhat easy to fulfill 25k G Guardian. On the other hand, if you're not playing Vanquisher, this card's pretty much unplayable, which is a real shame because they wanted to make Eradicators so good coming out of this set, and yet they can't even use the G Guardians. And this isn't just an Eradicator issue, this is just a Narakami issue in general. Brawlers can't use this, Kaiser can't use this, so you might as well just be playing Cray Elemental G Guardians and one Vitris on the off chance you manage to hit, get a bind off. A damn shame. In a Vanguard deck, though, this card's good. His retire effect isn't something you should really be trying to achieve, but it is just something to keep in the back of your mind, especially if you happen to have Chain Bolt Dragoons on your rear guard circles, because then your opponent can attack with the rear, you guard with this thing, kill it, and then your Vanguard goes up by 3k for his own skill, and then X amount of power for how many Chain Bolts you have in play, potentially up to 16,000 on their turn, which makes guarding attacks a bit easier. Wither Defender Gold is the keyword PG, and he is not good. Nope, or right now he is not worth playing over any of our other PGs because he is Generation Break 1, Thunder Strike 2. So you need to be striding and you need to be at two cards bound. Generally, Thunder Strike 2 skills don't require you to have be at Gen Break. Especially considering his skill requires you to Soul Blast 1, retire a rear guard, and be specifically boosting a Thunder Strike unit. That's already... A fair bit to commit to. If you do all that, then you can bounce into your hand and your opponent kills one of the rear guards. He does not bind it though, which is another slap in the face as to any potential this card had, as he would have been a counterblast free way to retire bind, but since he doesn't do that, it's just. Eh. And again, we don't have enough good Thunderstrike units out at this time to really warrant this. So just play Anastasia. Then we get to Polestar Eradicator, Zui-10. He is in every way worse than the original Zui-10, because the original Zui-10 gave you soul, and he gave you counterblasts to work with. This guy takes away counterblasts. It's so, so sad. So his effect is counterblast 1, when your descendant attacks, he gains 5k. So he's basically a spherical lord dragon, except for instead of being GB, he's CB1. Not sure if good trade-off. The other issue is that for Eradicator Grade 3s, your backup choices are, well, you kind of have better ones. You have Gauntlet Buster Dragon, you have Sweep Command Dragon, and you have Tempest Bolt Dragon as your Grade 3s, because they have pretty good on-ride skills. This guy on Vanguard does nothing. He is solely rearguard oriented, and that's not good. Like, we need we need Grade 3s to do things on Vanguard and rearguard. And his other skill is retire him when your Vanguard with Descendant attacks. You can pay the cost if you do. Your Vanguard gets 5k. So... I guess in theory is you swing with your descendant. Kind of us one, make this guy 16k. Swing with this guy when your descendant after your descendant stands, and when your descendant attacks again, you so throw him into the soul, and make your descendant 5k more. Again, just better options. 
Uh, let's see, Roaring Thundersphere, Jalil. This is the keyword grade three, and he's not good, especially compared to some of the other keyword grade threes out there. Looking at you, Wave grade three, Bloom grade, uh, grade three, and grade three, and especially the Hollow grade three. That thing's ridiculous, as it does. It searches for Hollow units, and it also has a good Hollow skill that has good synergy with the deck. This guy, well, you look at his skill, and you see he is Vanguard Circle. That's already a strike against him. And his skill is he gets 4,000 power and your opponent's rear guards cannot intercept at Thunderstrike 2. whoop de freaking do If he was power plus 5,000 and this skill was on GB2, then you know what? On rear guard, then you know what? Maybe a case can be made. But nope, he is a clearly worse option than some of the other cards out there. Like, you might as well just be running Blitzbear Dragoon as your backup grade 3 because at least it retire binds on ride. And at least on Vanguard, it gets big if, you're, if your opponent has a high bind zone if you can't stride. This guy has no good synergy. Eradicator Dragonic Death Side, touched on this before and I'll say it again, I'm not a big fan of it. If I run it, it's just out of like pure necessity because we didn't, we don't really have a lot of good rear guards. At least he can kill things for only one counter blast. He doesn't go to the soul or take cards away from you like Cho'o does. So he's an actual plus one but that plus one is again minusing your opponent by one card and his other skill is of course when your descendant appears in vagrant circle you can throw him to the soul and your opponent kills a rear guard in the front row they choose which is disappointing generally you had the ability to choose what dies in the front row but now your opponent does eh. like uh no i th i don't know if i'd run this but then again this is because I'm if i'm playing descendant i'm playing descendant Sweeper Descendant Gauntlet and Voltage Horn Dragon is just better for those decks. Training Monk Dragon is the Grade One Thunderstrike unit for Vanquisher. He had potential. Unfortunately, he's okay. He's not bad, but I was expecting a lot more. I was expecting him to be the Kagura clone of this thing, where you get to unflip damage. And then, therefore, we could not run our stand triggers, and therefore, we could run draw triggers to actually have a draw engine. But no, instead, he is Thunderstrike 1. When he attacks the Vanguard, he gets 9k. This is not GB lock, so this is viable if your opponent's trying to grade lock you. And his other skills GB1, throw him to the soul, choose your Vanquish or Vanguard, and it gets the ability to attack a rear guard in addition to its Vanguard attack. So, in clutch situations, if you absolutely need to kill something, and you cannot count on Vanquisher Voltage's on-hit skill to do it. You have this guy to cover for you. And it helps you just reduce the number of rearguards your opponent has. So you can get Vmax's skill off a bit easier. If you want to run this, I won't fault you. You can also run some other cards in the spot. Generally speaking, you have two spare grade ones to run. Aside from your Stride Enablers, your Perfect Guards, and your Chain Bolt Dragoons. So this is a card you could very much run in there. And then Escadic Draco Kid. I'm just going to say that I like this card, uh, card a lot more than I did before. The blue, the boost is very useful, and he is a way to get cards off the board. But you can still run either starter. Groundbreaking General Bisham is a card that has a lot of potential, but is just held down by a couple things, and we'll get into them. So, he's Vanguard, Rear Thunder Strike 2, kind of as one, Soul Blast 1, not Generation Break Restricted. That's cool. And... Then we get to the actual stuff. So he's a 10k, and when he hits the Vanguard, that's strike two, you may pay the cost. If you do, you reveal the top cards of your deck for every card in your opponent's bind zone. Search up the two cards with the Thunder Strike ability from among them, call them the separate rear guards, and shuffle your deck. At, at the end of the turn, bind units that were called as effect base up. Strike three. Strike four is also needing to call Thunder Strike units, of which we don't have enough good Thunder Strike units to call. So there is the four strikes against this card. But from like a design standpoint, I like this card. He does something different from retire bind or get big, as he allows he gives the clan the ability to aggro. Like you're calling units from the deck, and not only that, you you have the ability to actually search from the top cards of your deck, a la gold paladins, and call selective units. But the amount of car cards you get to work with grows more and more as you bind more and more. Like, imagine if, like, the new Gurguit says, for every face-up card in your G-Zone, look at the top cards of your deck for that number and call a unit with the break, with the Unite ability. That'd be sick. Him binding units that you call face-up 
what the hell is even the point with that? Like, is it really so bad that we, that the Narakami clan gets the ability to actually generate field advantage by calling units from the deck? No, that's a paladin thing. Yeah, and paladins also have the ability to retire cards like control clans and the ability to draw cards like OTT. And then you have Granblue and Gear Chronicle, which can do both. So, no, it would have been not an issue to have this guy permanently call the units that you get called. I mean, he does enable extra attacks in the battle phase, which is something that used to be the specialty of Nova Grappler and Aqua Force, but now Paladins and Gear Chronicle and Granblue can do that. So, I mean, if every uh, if most of the clans at this point can do things that the other clans can do, then what harm is it allowing some of the other clans to be able to do these same things? Like, really? So, like, granted, he can be really big and scary during voltage turns, which is, I guess, maybe why they put all these restrictions on him, because he has to hit, whereas if it, if it was just after the end of the, end of the battle that he attacked, you could make an argument for being able to, it would be dumb if you can pull things like Martial Arts Dragon or Trainee Monk Dragon from the top of the deck and attack with them while they're also really big. So, I guess in that sense... But, uh, uh, and like, again, we don't have enough good Thunderstrike units to work with, so, rip. Uh, Radicator Lightning Phoenix, talked about him before. I would have been fine if he didn't counterblast and instead buffed only by 2k, but now that there's a certain other card in this set, this isn't actually so bad. It allows you to make large columns during Descendant turns, or any turn where you're, you're, you have a Descendant Heart and you're attacking. You're at least going to be buffing your lines by 8k, which force an extra card. Oh, this card. Oh, this card. So, Martial Arts Dragon. I'm just going to be blunt. This card's bad, and if you are running it, you should feel bad because it's not good at all. He is only really good for one point in the game, and that's on your turn two ride. And if your opponent is stupid enough to call something to the front row, which they won't, because they know you're playing Narakami, so you're either going to kill it with this, or, the better play, attack their rearguard with your vanguard, and attack your vanguard, their vanguard with Shatura, so you can bind that rearguard from the drop zone and get a draw. But they're not going to do that. Instead, they're going to leave nothing in the front row, and then they'll no-guard your vanguard and guard your Shatura. So, no, this card's useless in his... And this Generation Break 1 skill make, makes him a 12k attacker. whoop de frickin do We have Shatura who does the same thing. Granted, this guy can attack rear guards, but who the fuck cares? You're killing their rear guards. No, this card is terrible, and I've seen videos of people playing with this card, and it has literally done nothing for them. The like I've, I'm talking like some Japanese channels I've been watching here and there, and every time I see Vanquish get played, I'm like, Ooh, Vanquisher video. And then I see them with Martial Arts, and I'm like, oh. And then they ride Martial Arts Dragon, and he never hits anything, because your opponent never calls anything. If he was your opponent chooses one of their grade one or less rear guards, retires and binds a face up, then an argument could have been made. Or, better yet, make him a GB1 version of Skyhall Dragon, where GB1, Counterblast 1, Soul Blast 1, if it Vanquisher Vanguard, retire and bind a unit's front row rear guard face up. Then he would have been good, but nope. As it is, this is just heart trash, don't play it. Stay as far away from it as possible. And again, like, just, just no. And the thing is too, like, there. I've even seen a video where someone was like praising this thing because it gives Narakami an early game. It gives them like the early edge they've been lacking. It also does like no, no, no. This card is not good. Let's just repeat this one more time. This card is not good. It's trash. And don't let the fact that it's better than nothing fool you into playing this thing. No, we don't accept it's better than nothing. That's why the OTT players are particularly pissed at how the recent spoilers for this tri uh, this Trinity Dragon booster is coming along. Because everything Oracle Think Tank has had spoiled so far has been utter trash. Zoom Dive Dragoon has the ability to, at Thunderstrike 2, kind of plus 1, buff your front row Thunderstrike units by 2k. This can be used multiple times. Neat, but not worth playing over everything else. Strike Slasher Dragon is like that one card that actually makes the Eradicator deck somewhat playable. As he has two good skills. First skill is, 
when he GB one when he boosts a unit and the boosted attack hits while you control a descendant vanguard, you counter charge one. If you don't have the boost descendant, you can boost anything, say lightning phoenix, and now that counter blast one you spent after your van your descendant attacked, you get to make back. Wonderful. And his other skill is once per turn at the end of the battle, your vanguard with descendant attacked and he didn't hit, you soul charge. You can soul charge one. It's an unconditional soul charge. It builds up soul for Zillion. This card's good. Like this is oh, this is the kind of upgrade that you would expect them to give to a unit. Not like what we saw with Zuitan. Zybo, because Strike Slasher Dragon exists now, you can actually run Zybo. I don't know how many of these I'd run. As the grade one space is like a little iffy, you have like your perfect guards. I think you should be playing Stride Nippers in this deck. But that's just me. So I don't know how much space you'll have with Zyobo because you happen to be needing Strike Slasher Dragon. But it's a thing. Uh, Dragon Dancer Fatin, finally a good piece of support from this set. Thunder Strike 2, Soul Blast 1, one placed on Rear Guard, draw a card. It's a plus one. It generates advantage. I, I, I have no words because... This is exactly the kind of thing we've been needing. Like, it's a better Rising Phoenix for Thunder Strike decks. Granted, I haven't been playing Rising Phoenix in Factory decks for a long time because it was actually conflicting with uh, Rock Climb Dragoon, which you're still going to be running in here because it enables your deck and it doesn't require any other conditions other than being on GB1 and you having a Vanquisher Vanguard, which we have more of now, so he's actually much more viable than he was before. But I digress. This card's very good. You can honestly run it over a card that I think I actually closed the tab on. Uh, no, wait. We're in the commons. Yeah, so I've, I already talked about Trainee Monk Dragon. Like, yeah, you can either run this or Trainee Monk Dragon in your last spots for grade ones. And either one works. They do more or less the same thing. One gets you a card in your hand. And the other one takes a card away from your opponent. The only real downside to Fatin is she's a 6k. Which is actually important for when you're trying to push because you can't form proper columns especially on vmax turns where you won't have large rear guards but as long as you have a chain bolt dragoon in play you can at least make this thing a 7k booster i mean an 8k booster which with shatura allows you to hit for 19 relevant uh ambitious dragoon is not worth playing over any other starter you can either you can run either lynchu or uh, first under Draco Kid or uh, Ascetic Draco Kid. So, no, don't run this. And then we have Jin of Rainy Death Storm. I think this card, more than anything else, disappointed me because after seeing the stupid stand triggers we've gotten other for other clans, i.e. Uh, Taro for Genesis, Dr. Roid Referos for Angel Feather, you can make the argument for Lizbeth for Neo Nectar. Urvatar for Gear Chronicle, I was expecting our stand trigger to be good. Not busted, but you know, a Wild Run Dragoon that drew a card. You know, something like that. Something that would enable this. Instead, we got something that on call becomes a 7k booster for the turn, and then you choose one of your units and it gets Thunder Strike 1 when this unit attack hits your opponent retire binds until end of turn. That's it. He doesn't even go back into the deck so you can justify running stands because the thing about stands these days are the stands that you do run almost always go back into the deck so you can then check them again this guy does not he just sits there and looks stupid and he's not even a noble so you can't even run him in the noble kami deck which would be the one justification for actually leaving your triggers on the board if they aren't going to the soul or into the deck then they have to they need to be nobles so that you can at least get the effect of Vishnu off. But no, he can't even do that right. No, don't run Dust Storm. He is trash. He's not martial arts dragon bad, but he's trash. At the very least, he's only generation break one to get this skill off and not Thunderstrike one. Although, to be fair, you shouldn't be running this thing. And that's the set for you guys. And rather my thoughts on the Narakami support of this set. Again, as I alluded to at the very beginning, a bit angrily, this set's not good for us. It's 
not good for us at all. It, it gives us a couple good cards, and that's it. G set 11 or G set 12 is going to have to do a friggin' lot in order to like save Narcom, because as it is, we're basically in the same position that Pale Moon is as far as it goes. We got cards, but they're not good cards. They're not enough to help the deck get over that hurdle and become a legit meta threat because our problems still persist. As I alluded to before, we don't build advantage. We can't play when our opponent has no board for us to retire because most of our binding comes off of killing things because we did not get enough cards that enable Thunderstrike. We can't deal with aggressive decks that are able to multi-attack, specifically calling units in battle phase. Restanders is a bit different because Bulwark Dragon can kill things before they can stand back up most of the time, but against units that just call new units into play, no, we can't really do anything about that. <sighs> Honestly, I don't know how they're going to fix this, because okay, I do know how they can fix this, and I'm probably going to have to make another video saying how I would support Narakami in later sets, but to be blunt, the way they can fix this and to make and solve a lot of our issues is just simply put, give us cards that force your opponent to retire and bind, and if they can't kill units because they have resist units or they have no units, make them forcibly bind a card from the drop zone and then let us get a plus one instead. Say, I don't know, counter plus one, soul blast one. When your use unit is placed on Vanguard Circle, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row, retire and bind a face up. If a card was not retired, your opponent chooses a card in their drop zone, binds a face up, and draw one card. Look at that. This guy's suddenly playable. But nope. They did like if if they could do something like that in set eleven or set twelve whenever we get our follow up support, because we're gonna get at least one more set of support in this block. Our character is a on one of the more important teams. It's on the rival team to the main character team, the bigger rival team, because it has Altmel on it. Yeah, Vanguard is at least going to get a couple more pieces of support, or at least Thunderstrike in general will. God knows what they're going to support for, like, subclans, as I said. Please don't be Dungaree. Maybe they'll finally give Kaiser support, because Kaiser has that potential to still be really good. It's just, who knows? But anyway, to make a long story short, don't buy boxes of the set if you're looking solely for Narakami. Just buy singles. Just... Get your opponent, your your friends' Narakami cards off of their boxes because you know Shadow players are probably going to be buying boxes of this set trying to pull their Lu arts, and instead they'll pull Zillions and be like, "Yo, I've got three bucks for you," because that's pretty much all the cards are going to be worth. And that's my thoughts on the set. As for actual decks itself, I won't be profiling anything for the foreseeable future. I have to get the cards, and that has to wait until I'm done with all the Christmas and stuff. So we'll probably look at the end of December, New Year's most likely. And yeah, that's about all I can say. So I hope you guys enjoyed this rather salt-induced video of the Blue Corner. Until next time, this is Blue Star 89 jacking out.